Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Richard Moglin. Welcome to this week's Weekly Watches video sponsored by Marketsmith. And today I'm going to share with you kind of 18 stocks that in my opinion are showing some type of relative strength versus the overall market and have some decent growth fundamentals. And overall, in order to build this list, I'll quickly go through that process. Um, I started with about 700 stocks. We've got 679 stocks in uh, this list right here in TC2000. And this is from the kind of three screens that I share on uh, Twitter, the fundamental rank sheet, the IPO rank sheet, and also the performance rank sheet. I posted um, I posted those on Twitter uh, yesterday, so go ahead and check those out. But anyway, I take the kind of top 200, 300 from each of those three lists, put them in this watch list. And in, in this case, I kind of sorted it by weekly change and just went through each of these around 700 stocks and just tried to find stocks that are holding up well versus the overall market, holding those key moving averages, um, have good volume profiles. So even if they're pulling back, is it on lower volume? And basically pick some setups that are a little bit more mature in terms of their base development and are holding their overall structure. Um, so that's kind of my uh, general thoughts there. And we'll go ahead and start with uh, each of these stocks in MarketSmith. Um, to start things off, we've got A, B, and B. Let's go do a daily chart here. Uh, this is a recent IPO. It uh, doesn't have great growth numbers here, but it's got a very good story and a whole bunch of funds and high quality funds already invested into this stock. And overall, if we look at the chart, let's go back up to right here. Let's sort by symbol and go A, B, and B. Um, so overall, it is um, pretty far off its high, about 20%. And it had a huge kind of hammer candle here on Friday, but it is holding above that 50 SMA. Um, I don't like how this decrease is on above average volume, uh, but so far this seems pretty normal, especially considering it's a recent IPO. It's going to be a little bit more volatile than a more mature stock. Uh, so that is a B and B and moving on, we've got our next stock DKNG. And um, this was holding up excellently really until Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of last week. And overall, you've got great sales growth. Um, it's not supposed to be profitable soon. Composite rating is only a 77, but you've already got um, 500 funds invested into this company, um, all the way up from 17 in September of 2019, and a whole bunch of high quality funds as well. So something special is going on with this stock. Um, and overall, if you look at the chart, it is a stage four marked here, but if you go to a weekly, um, this is kind of a stage one in my view. So this would be stage three and kind of a stage three um, kind of add-on base here. So um, it's not late stage in my view, uh, but you do have a failure of this previous breakout from the 6419 pivots, but now it's fallen back to the prior cup and handle pivot, as well as the 50 SMA and bounce strongly here. So um, if we go to TC2000, we can take a little bit of a closer look. Um, I do want to see it reclaim this um, kind of high relatively soon if the market uh, restarts the uptrend, I think that would be very positive. Uh, but overall, the fact that it was able to break out uh, during this market weakness uh, says a lot about the stock and its potential. Uh, so that is DKNG. And next up, we have uh, DT Dynatrace Inc. Um, and overall, you can see great growth here in terms of earnings and sales. Last quarter earnings up 70%, sales up 28%. So not quite as high growth as these three previous quarters, but still pretty good. You've got great estimates for 2021. Uh, the overall comms rating is a 94, nice growth in fund ownership, and four high-quality funds in there as well. And um, I like how it's kind of holding this pivot from the stage one consolidation uh, really well. Nice hammer bars on this day and this day as well, and support off the 50. Uh, so nice confluence here um, with that setup. So overall, uh, looking at the technicals, it looks pretty good. Um, this isn't the prettiest space here, but I like how it's had a strong prior uptrend from um, its recent IPO base, and now has pulled back nicely um, on pretty much low volume, except for this day right here, which is actually a positive day, uh, given the nice um, closing range here. So it looks pretty good, and it's back above that pivot, um, and that pivot is at um, 48.85. Um, so that is DT, and next up we've got GM, uh, not necessarily um, the classic growth stock because it's more mature, of course, uh, but recently it's gotten great growth. You can see earnings up 999%, so up 22%. Um, not the greatest estimates for 2021 or 2022, and the revisions are down, which I don't like to see. The overall comms rating is an 86, uh, but you've got decent growth and fund ownership, slow and steady, 
and Fidelity Contra Fund um, starting a position as well recently, which is interesting. Um, so that is GM. You can see it's moved up from a stage two cup and now has formed kind of this consolidation um, right above this pivot. So it uh, looks pretty good. And overall, looking at the price and volume action, uh, pretty decent, especially considering um, we are in a market in correction. Our sign is pretty much um, flat, but it definitely showed some RS. Last week, you've got nice kind of tails on this day, this day, and Thursday and Friday. So it looks pretty good. And holding above these key moving averages, I think is extremely key. Um, and I really like how overall it's formed a higher low while a lot of stuff has undercut uh, this previous low. So uh, definitely very interesting. And moving on, we've got our next stock, which is Google. And overall, not the greatest growth numbers, but slow and steady, of course. Uh, decent estimates for 2021 and 2022. A composite rating is a 98. Um, growth in fund ownership and obviously a whole bunch of high quality funds in there as well. And overall, looking at the chart, you can see it's moved up from a stage to B and is forming this nice shelf here above 2000 and had some really nice action last week. Um, so going over to TC2000, you can see that it had a nice gap up um, on volume and now it's holding above the 21 EMA. Uh, looks very, very good. A three bar break to the upside on this past Friday and RS new high before price on Thursday and Friday. So uh, this is holding up better than Netflix, Amazon, um, NVIDIA, a lot of the other kind of larger cap um, names. Um, so definitely something to be interested in, um, especially if you're into more mature blue chip companies. Uh, so that is Google. And moving on, we've got InMode. Um, and taking a look at the earnings and sales, you can see last quarter was very strong. Earnings up over 100%, sales up 60%. After tax margins also uh, very great um, at 53%. Uh, decent estimates for 2021 and 2022, nothing crazy. Overall comms rating is a very strong 98. Uh, nice growth in fund ownership and one high quality fund in there as well. And it did fail, similar to DKNG, um, a breakout attempt to new all-time highs. Uh, but so far, it is kind of holding within the structure right here. Um, and it is holding above 60 and the 50 SMA. And I don't like the volume coming in on Thursday and Friday and the wide ranges here. Uh, but if it can kind of tighten up once again, back within this kind of shelf, I think that would be very positive um, given the overall market conditions. And you can see the RS line has just been increasing uh, very strongly during this uptrend, but has pulled back uh, given this breakout failure. Um, so that is in mode. And moving on, we've got LLY, a pharmaceutical company. Um, and overall, decent growth this past quarter. Earnings up 59%, sales up 22%. Uh, margins are good. Uh, not the strongest estimates for 2021 and 2022, but it's very steady. Um, and the overall comms rating is an 89. Uh, decent fund ownership growth here and two high quality funds in there as well. And it's within a stage two flat base during this time. And you can see the RS line is increasing um, as we pull back in this correction. Uh, so overall, not the fastest mover once again, uh, but it is holding up well. And it's good to have a few of these kind of slower moving stocks uh, to balance out the higher volatile recent IPOs um, that can go up and down 4% in a day. So overall, definitely showing some RS here. And ideally, um, it continues to move up here and challenges this pivot. Uh, so that is LLY. And next up, we've got Lyft. Um, it doesn't really have any growth numbers here. It's very much a story stock. Um, it's not supposed to be profitable in 2021, but is supposed to be profitable in 2022, interestingly enough. Uh, the composite rating is only 59. But looking at the fund ownership, you can see a gradual increase and one high quality fund in there as well. Um, and it's very important to keep in mind kind of the, um, the life cycle stock is in because you can see it's still within its IPO due diligence phase under this kind of longer term high. And you've also got this kind of significant point of resistance that it could be dealing with relatively soon. But overall, showing a ton of RS here, especially on a weekly chart, uh, given this nice move uh, during the overall market weakness. Uh, so that is Lyft and moving over to T2000. Um, once again, you can see nice volume coming in, big blue bars, uh, nice move up, powerful move up here, uh, move sideways, and then the R sign really increasing strongly um, to end last week. Uh, so that is Lyft. And moving on, we've got PII, Polaris Inc. And if we go back to a daily chart, you can see great earnings the past two quarters, over 70%, both of them, and last quarter earnings up 83% as well. 
and you can see decent growth estimates for 2021 and 2022 in terms of annual EPS. Composite rating is a 90. Uh, not the strongest growth in fund ownership here, but it is increasing. And you've got one high quality fund in there as well. And as for TC2000, if you go there, you can see it just try to break out above this pivot. You've got a downward trend line right here. And you could also just use this horizontal line at this high at 126.95. Um, so we'll see if this works during this correction. Um, breakouts usually fail during kind of uncertain times. Uh, but if this can work, that's definitely a, a sign of RS. Uh, so moving on, we've got our next stock, which is Sam or Boston Beer Company. You can see great growth numbers the past few quarters. Last quarter earnings up 142%, sales up 53%. Uh, great estimates for 2021 and 2022. Overall comms rating is a 96. Nice growth in fund ownership and a whole bunch of high quality funds in there as well. And as for the technicals, you can see it's right at the pivot of the stage two consolidation here. Standard pivot of 192.8. And it did pull back from a breakout attempt, but it's still holding within the structure here and found support at the 50 SMA. We've got two really nice tail bars here on these two days and a nice bar as well on Friday. So it looks pretty good. And we'll see if it can retake this pivot. Uh, moving on, we've got Snapchat, which isn't showing quite as much RS as... Um, a lot of the other stocks on this list, uh, but it is holding above the 50 SMA here, as you can see here. Uh, great earnings the past two quarters. It's not supposed to be profitable in 2021 or 2022. Uh, the composite rating is a 96. You can see a great increase in fund ownership and for high quality funds in there as well. And as for the charts, um, as I said, it is kind of um, pulling back dramatically here, uh, right back from all time highs down to the 50 SMA. And it could obviously need a, a lot more time to build out a proper base, a five, seven week base, uh, but it is holding above that 50 SMA and this decrease wasn't really on high volume. Um, so we could give it the benefit of a doubt and this is kind of an early pullback to the 50 SMA. Uh, this is the second touch of that key moving average after this huge earnings breakout on volume. Uh, so that is Snap and next up we've got uh, Sono. Um, and overall, this has been trending beautifully from another earnings gap up. Great earnings the past two quarters. Um, estimates for 2021 are positive, and for 2022, EPS is supposed to increase 20%. Uh, the overall comps rating is a 98, so very strong there. Uh, nice growth in fund ownership and one high quality fund investing into the stock as well. And as for the chart, it's been trending beautifully off the 21 EMA. You can see a touch there, there, and there. And now it's pulled back once again. Um, and had some nice power here, earnings gap ups, um, and good volume character here, and um, a nice hammer candle to end the week last Friday. Uh, so that is Sono, and next up we've got SSTK, or Shutterstock Inc., and overall great growth the past two quarters, earnings up 258%, the most recent quarter, so is up 90%, and after tax margins up 19.1%. Um, and overall, not the strongest growth estimates for 2021 or 2022, but the re revisions are up. Uh, the composite rating is a 95, a decent growth in fund ownership, but you don't have any high quality funds investing into this stock. Uh, but as for the chart, let's go to TC2000. Um, you can see a great bar here up 23.55%, uh, then follow on volume uh, for a whole bunch of days. And then this decrease to the 21 EMA is kind of um, orderly. It's not that volatile. And it's found support there on this past Friday. So it looks pretty good. And we'll see if the overall market resumes the uptrend, if this can continue up and challenge these all-time highs once again. Moving on, we've got TDC, which is a computer data storage company, which is a top group here. And overall, you can see great earnings growth the past two quarters, but you can see sales growth has been lackluster. And going to a weekly, um, it hasn't really changed at all here. Um, it's always been about 470, 480. Uh, so that isn't great, but you can see good estimates for 2021 and 2022. Um, and the overall comps rating is an 83. Uh, not strong growth in fund ownership. It's pretty much flat and actually decreasing over the past few years. And you don't have any high quality funds invested into the stock. But if you go ahead and look at the technicals, you can see a huge gap up here on large volume. And then once again, an orderly decrease um, to the 21 EMA. And during this kind of market weakness here, it hasn't quite been as volatile as other growth stocks. You can see this range here is only about 8% while we're seeing a lot of 10, 15% even. And it had a nice inside day to finish the week. Um, so overall, we'll see how this works out once the overall market resumes the uptrend. Uh, moving on, we've got our next stock, which is Twitter. 
And you can see nice growth the past two quarters. Estimates for 2021 are positive, and for 2022, a further growth of 31%, with the estimate revisions being up. Uh, the overall comps rating is a 96. Uh, decent growth in fund ownership and two high-quality funds in there as well. And overall, Twitter has moved out from the stage 1B to base, and after the earnings gap up, moved up to 80. Uh, couldn't hold that level and has decreased um, and had a nice hammer candle on this past Friday. Um, so overall, I would like to see it hold this kind of high volume close uh, so we can see kind of next week if it retakes that level. Uh, but overall, this is supportive action on Friday and uh, we'll see um, how this acts once the overall market resumes the uptrend. Uh, moving on, we've got Uber, which similar to Lyft, doesn't have the greatest growth numbers in terms of earnings and sales and margins, uh, but it is a very good story. And you can see it's not supposed to be profitable in 2021 or 2022. Uh, the comms rating is very poor at 47, uh, but you've got great growth in fund ownership and three high quality funds in there as well, along with Fidelity Contra Fund. And looking at the technicals, it's been holding uh, this structure pretty well here and holding this green line, which is the previous kind of IPO high that's set way back in uh, 2019. So um, we'll see how it acts. It is a little bit wide and loose here, so I want to see it tighten up on the right-hand side uh, before I would consider entering the stock once the overall market follows through. Uh, so that is Uber, and moving on, we've got Vail, um, which is just breaking out of a cup and handle here, which is a stage two on this past Friday. A nice growth the past two quarters. Uh, great estimates for 2021, but not so much for 2022, down 19% but the revisions are up. The comms rating is a very strong 99. You've got um, steady growth in terms of fund ownership and no high quality funds in there as well. Uh, so last on the list, we've got Zebra Technologies Corp. And overall you can see not the strongest growth numbers down here. Earnings last quarter were up 25%, but nothing um, kind of huge. And you can see the estimates for 2021 are up 20% and for 2022 up 10%, but the revisions are down, which isn't a great sign. And overall you can see the comms rating is a 93. And you can see that you basically doubled your fund ownership over the past two years, and Fidelity Contra Fund has a position in this company. And looking at the chart, you can see it moved up strongly from this last earnings report, and then moved up to about 500, but then has pulled back to 21 EMA, had a nice hammer candle on this past Friday. Uh, so that is pretty much a run through of all the stocks on my kind of RS list for this week. Uh, we'll see what happens. You gotta be ready for a fall through day and have a list ready of potential stocks to buy. And definitely a couple on here are kind of my top stocks and top ideas. Uh, so let me know kind of how you're dealing with this market and any stocks that you're watching uh, that are showing RS and that I may have missed. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys in future videos.